One of my favorite things in the world to do is watch Friends. I know it's been off for years and years. It's not even around, but I still find myself binge watching old episodes. And I was thinking about this today and thinking it's the predictability of the friends in the circle, right? You have Chandler with his quirkiness, Monica with her type A of just everything has to be so neat and tidy and organized. It's Phoebe's ability to make you laugh at her silly songs. Ross always comes in with those smart comments and Joey and him and his food, like it is just so hilarious. And of course, Rachel, she just brings everybody together and it's just such this beautiful, cohesive team of people. And it's why I wanted to come on and share with you today that I have an opportunity for you to find your friends in the content creation space. So if you are thinking about creating your first or your next digital course, I don't want you to miss this opportunity because Amy Porterfield just opened the doors for registration for her course, Confident Bootcamp. And I'm actually offering a special bonus for anyone that registers for the course Course Confident Bootcamp through my special link. So I want you to go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register. That's crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And what you're going to find when you get there is I have this special bonus private podcast series. It's called Money Mindset for Creators. So I want you to go register for Amy's bootcamp download the podcast and immediately start listening to it because what this training is set up to do is to help you get your mind right about monetizing your content, making money so that you can fuel your content creation dreams. So go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register for course confident. And I cannot wait for you to find your friends and find the people that will be there for you. Do you see what I did there? Yeah. Nice little friends segue connection. Go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And I cannot wait to see you inside. Okay. Let's get into today's episode. Today's episode, we are covering some really fun things that I just cannot wait to tell you about. Because y'all know, like, this is my thing, okay? And if you're brand new here, you're going to realize this very, very quickly. I love anything that has to do with podcasting, okay? Like, this should be obvious for anybody that's been listening for a while. But like I said, if you're brand new it's going to come very quickly, you're going to realize, because today's episode, we are talking to the co-founder of my favorite podcast app. Yes, like literally (laughs) the apps that are out there for podcasting, I'm obsessed with those, I'm obsessed with learning about them, how they can help us as podcasters, but also how we can consume content in a different way as podcast listeners. So let's get right to it. Welcome to The Profit Podcast, where we teach entrepreneurs how to start, launch, and market their podcast. I'm your host, Crystal Profit, and I'm so excited that you're here. Thanks for hanging out with me today, because if you've been trying to figure out the world of podcasting, think of this show as the time-saving shortcut you've been looking for. So let's get right to it, shall we? So like I said in the beginning, we are talking about my favorite favorite podcast app. Yes, this is the app that I use to listen to all of my podcast episodes. And I just, I can't wait for you to hear this conversation. You've probably heard me talk about good pods on the podcast. I've actually created a few YouTube videos and I will be putting out more content as they continue to iterate and change things on the app and make them even more user-friendly for you. But I'm really excited that I got to sit down with JJ. So JJ Ramberg is the founder of Good Pods, the app where you can follow your friends and influencers to see what they are listening to. And we're definitely going to go into all the nuances of why I love Good Pods and the actually pretty famous people that use it on a regular basis. It's going to surprise you because... 
like like JJ was name dropping left and right, these really big influencers who are on the platform that you can go follow. So while I love Apple Podcasts and I think a lot of the other players that are out there are, you know, they serve their purpose. I love Good Pods because it just goes above and beyond to enhance your podcast listening experience and uh, just so many fun things. I just, I can't wait to dive into this conversation. So here is my chat with JJ. All right, Profit Podcast listeners, I am so excited to introduce to you to JJ. JJ, welcome to the show. Hi, Crystal. I'm so excited to be here. Yes. Oh my gosh. So this is so much fun. I told you all a little bit about JJ in the intro, but she's the founder of Good Pods. I already told you all this is my favorite podcast app. I love listening to my podcast on there and sharing all the things like the takeaways and I can share ratings and just so many fun features of this app. So JJ, I would love to just get started with How did you find yourself creating an app for podcasts? Like, where did the story begin with you? Uh, You know, it's pretty simple. It, it, we created it. My co-founder is my brother, who's a very successful serial entrepreneur. And we created it simply because we wanted it, which is how so many people start their own companies, right? They see like, oh, wait, I want this. Oh, it's not there. I'll create it. Um, And the idea behind Good Pods is simply that you can follow your friends and influencers to see what they're listening to. And then you can play the podcast right there, or you can bookmark it for later or save it, et cetera. But the idea, we came up with the idea kind of from two ways. One is I was a big, avid listener to podcasts, and I would find myself ready to go out for a run. And let's just say I had 40 minutes to go running, and I would literally spend the first 20 minutes just scrolling through trying to find a podcast to listen to. And then inevitably I'd like call my best friend or call my brother and say, what should I listen to? And it just seemed like a very inefficient way. Plus I was getting terribly out of shape. (laughs) And so this already exists, right? It exists in books for Goodreads. It exists, um, you know, other social media. We said, why isn't this in podcasts where I can just get a feed of what people are listening to? But then on the flip side, I was also a podcaster. So I was an anchor for NBC News for 13 years and I had a podcast and I realized that a lot of the reason why my podcast was so successful, partly I'd like to believe because the content was so awesome, but also because I had this big machine behind me, right? And I knew that just like with so much other media, there are all these amazing voices out there that are just not getting heard because they don't have the industry connections or the marketing dollars that I had. And we wanted to create a way for even under the radar podcasts to get seen and heard. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. I love the mission that y'all have behind it because you're not just creating something hoping that it's going to work in the marketplace. Like you are a podcaster. So you understand some of the pains that podcasters go through. And I really wanted to touch on what you just said. You know, it's like the discoverability of podcasts. Like uh, my audience is, they don't have a huge marketing budget and they're like, do I spend money on Facebook ads or on Instagram? Do I invest in Google ads? What should I do for discoverability? And the thing that I keep going back to over and over again is, you know, you could just join Good Pods, be on there, and you can listen to your own podcast. And that would actually get your shows out in front of other people. Or And then you can tell, you know, your friends and family, like, hey, if you use this app, whenever you're listening to my podcast, it would show up organically in the feed. So that's what I think is so cool. But I, I'm i just curious, like, what is it about discoverability like that it's like a passion for y'all as part of Good Pods? Uh, you know, I'm going to tell you one thing first about what you were just saying. We've seen tons yeah. of under-radar podcasts go viral on Good Pods. So there was one about decluttering your home from a podcast that I promise you no one on the platform had heard of before, except for the first person who listened to it. And we watched it go from person to person to person because, you know, one person would listen to it. It goes on their profile, goes on the feed. The next person's like, oh, that's cool. And so, it, so it's working that they go viral. Um, To answer your question about why I care about this, I love podcasts really in the same way. I I told you before, I was a journalist for so many years. 
And what I think is so neat about podcasts is the same thing I thought was neat about being a journalist in that you get to kind of dip in and out of all these worlds. So I can listen to your show one day, Crystal, and then I want to listen to something in comedy or, you know, then I want to listen to a meditation podcast. But I do not have the time nor inclination to go research what are the best episodes in all of these different worlds. So instead, I just know like, hey, I want to learn about the business of podcasting or marketing, et cetera. Let me go see what Crystal's listening to. I want to know about meditation. Let me go see what my friend Chad's listening to. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's, it's so funny you say that because there was one uh, I'm like, I'm friends with, and I know, you know, the guys over at Buzzsprout and I follow several of them that are on good pods and uh, Tom, he's one of the co-founders over there. I remember he had listened to an episode that I had listened to and I was like, Oh, we have similar interests. So I went and looked on his profile and that was how I discovered Rob Lowe had a new podcast and I was like, Oh, okay. And then, so I started kind of bouncing around between all these people that I'm connected with. Like you said, it's like, you kind of get a peek into like, who people are kind of behind the scenes, which I love. I'm such a nut for behind the scenes and like seeing who people are, what they're interested in. So if you go to my good pods profile, you're going to see the office ladies podcast, like for sure. I'm a binge listener of their podcast. I love it so much. So you'll see like, this is what I like to listen to in my free time, but you'll also see the business things that I listen to as well. So I know that that's a feature that y'all are really excited about and seeing that y'all have these big influencers. So I know that you have some pretty big names. So can you tell us a few that you have on the platform? We do. We've been really excited about it. Um, A recent one was uh, Alyssa Milano, who I think is really interesting. She just tweeted about Good Pods the other day. We don't we don't know her, so this these are not paid posts. Kim Kardashian West is on there, and she put it out on her social media, um, which was amazing. But then we have Malcolm Gladwell is on there. Um, Gwyneth Paltrow is on there. Um, Toure, who I used to work with at NBC, is on there. Dan Harris, who's ten um, percent happier, and also. Um, at ABC News, he's on there. So there, there are a lot of really interesting people who you can follow. But again, I think it's, uh, and they're great, but I think it's really cool to just frankly follow your friends also, right? Because um, those are the people you really trust to know what they're listening to. But but again, if we flip this to say from the podcaster side, we keep talking about from the listener, but from the podcaster side, I also think it's a really neat way to market with other people who have similar podcasts as you because I can put something on my feed where I listen to you, Crystal. You can put it on your feed that you listen to me, and then your followers will see me. Will see my podcast. My followers will see yours. That's so good, and that's actually a really good strategy. I hadn't thought of before because you know the more people that get on there that you're connected to. So let's let's back up for a second because for someone who is brand new to the platform and they don't really they've never used it, they haven't downloaded it. Maybe they're on another podcast app player. What like how is it actually set up? Like we have a profile and we can have followers and then those followers see everything that we're posting and then there's a there's a feed that's organic, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, I'm yeah, like, hang on, I don't want to get too complicated. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll, I'll I'll make it simple for you. So picture Instagram or Twitter for podcasts. So you you join the same way you join any other social media platform, which you come on, you create your profile. You connect your profile to your podcast if you are a podcaster so that I know your profile is on there with your podcast. Um, And you follow, you invite your friends and you follow your friends who are already on there and you follow other people who you find interesting. Then you can either listen to a podcast on Good Pods and it goes to your profile and the feed, or you can find any podcast on there and just click on share and it'll share to your profile and your feed. And then as you listen and share things, other people who are following you will see that. And that's how other people discover things by following you and being like, oh, cool. Crystal, listen to The Office, ladies. Let me try that out. I love Crystal. This seems cool. 
Um, keep in mind, you can keep anything you want private. So if something if you don't want the world to know, you can keep that private as well. But another thing, we um, we just think there is a dearth of podcast influencers out there, right? You can promote your podcast on Instagram or on Twitter or through text, etc. But when it comes to the moment where I'm about to hop in my car and I'm thinking about what am I going to listen to? Be like, oh, right, Crystal recommended something on Twitter. Scroll, 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 scroll. Shoot, where was that, right? Now we just go to Good Pods and say, Crystal's profile, oh, look, there it is, play. I love it. I love it so much. And my favorite feature is not only can you share, right? Like, so I could share it to my profile, but I can also rate it. I can give each individual episode a star rating. I think that that is fantastic. But to take you even one step further, I can share my favorite part of the episode or that that's actually what I enjoy is after I listen to an episode, I'll say, Oh, this was my number one takeaway, or this is the reason why you should listen to this. Because when I see that on someone else's profile, it's almost like the synopsis of the synopsis, right? It's like, just give it to me. Cause if if I were to text someone, like you said, and say, tell me a podcast to listen to, it's like this episode and here's why and I'm more likely to listen because if they enjoyed it, I will probably enjoy it as well. And as a podcaster, what's neat, and as actually as every user, you can see who else listened to it so you can engage. And that's like you were saying, right? You went onto your friend's profile and you're like, oh, we both listened to this podcast. Cool. It's really fun when you listen to something and then you suddenly see your friends listen to it, it's super fun to see how many people have listened to something that you have. And as a podcaster, it's really neat because you can see who's listened and then you can engage with them on the platform. For sure. And I just thought about, you know, from a marketing standpoint, as a podcaster, what awesome social proof, you know, like you, you put out an episode and you can see how many downloads and you're like, that's great, but I could actually go to Good Pods for a specific episode and see there's a few people that commented, you know, and they said, oh, we love this episode because, and this was my favorite takeaway of this one spe- like specific episode. What a fantastic way to take those screenshots and use them for social proof that your podcast, like share that on Instagram. That's actually one of my favorite features that I know y'all added at the end of last year that I think is so cool is you can now share directly from Good Pods to Instagram or Twitter or your favorite social platform. And you can say, you know, I listen to this on Good Pods and it's all connected. And I think it looks really pretty. So oh, I just wanted to tell you that I really like that feature. <laughs> I will tell our designers. I will tell. Yeah. I mean, you, you've totally got this down, Crystal. Like You should be our marketing department because you understand the whole benefit of it from the listener side and the podcaster side. There's one other cool thing that we've just launched, if we can talk about that. Yes, uh, which please. Is, which is, and we're very excited about this. Um, it's podcast groups. So picture, um, it's basically like, let's picture, let's, let's say the um, true crime group, right? They can be private groups or public groups. But for this example, I'll say it's a public group. Anyone can join the true crime podcast group and add interesting true crime podcast to it. So that if you're a true crime lover, you would go join that group and get suggestions around that. But it could be really specific, like, you know, the Purple Pool group, everyone who has a purple podcast around purple pools. I don't know why I just came up with that one. Um, Or (laughs) think of it like a book club, like you and your five best friends create the, you know, the, the slope side lane club. And then it's you guys just sharing podcasts with each other. But we are super excited about this new feature that we just launched. Oh, that sounds so awesome. And I know um, JJ and I, so I was trying to remember the last time we chatted because we were talking about this feature. It was coming out and I was telling her, this is so cool for us in the online business space. Like if you have a membership, if you have an online course, if you have something that's centered around one topic, this is actually a cool new feature that you could have. Like, like JJ was saying, like a book club, like a group where you can say, look, 
I listen to this podcast about marketing and this podcast about funnels and this podcast about this. And now let's all listen to them like for the week and then let's share collectively what we thought about them, what our biggest takeaways were. So those are just a few ideas I've had, but I'm sure once I actually dive in there, because I haven't created a group yet. As of us recording this, JJ was just telling me, like, this is a new feature. I'm going to create one and I'm going to have one for us, like the Profit Podcast listeners. We're going to have a group because I think it's so cool to be able to have this interaction because you don't get this typically in podcasting. You have to be independent on a different social media platform. And that's what I really love about this. So can you kind of tell us a little bit more about some of the things that you love about good pods that it, it like kind of blends a bunch of different features of social media. Cause I know you have the groups. I know you have the people that you can follow. Is there any other feature that you're just really excited about? Um, well, we also have lists so you can come up with playlists, which I also like. And there are also, uh, there is some, um, there are so, some algorithmic suggestions also based on what you've listened to before here are some ideas. And then we also have some places where we kind of go out and search under the radar podcasts that we recommend that we put out there as well. Because as as we talked about in the beginning, part of our mission is really to get under the radar voices out there. I mean, I will promote if there's a really interesting daily or something, right? We'll promote that also, of course, and it will probably end up in most listened to. Um but we're really interested in in uncovering ones that you wouldn't already know about so that you get beyond the same three podcasts that you listen to every day. Yes, yes. I love it. I love it. And so, okay, here's a personal question. I'm going to put you on the spot because I didn't tell you I was going to ask you this. How many hours of podcasts do you listen to on a weekly basis? Oh my God, that's a really good question. But I have to be, I have to be honest. It does change week to week. So there'll be some times where I'll listen like three hours a day because I'm going on walks, I do it while I'm cooking, blah, blah, blah. And we're in the middle of this pandemic still. There are still times when I'm my life is filled up with taking care of my kids, doing work, blah, blah, blah. And I, you know, I'll go for a couple of days without listening to anything. Yeah. Yeah. That's the same for me. I I know over the holidays, you know, I thought I was going to, I was like, oh, I'm going to catch up on all these shows I didn't get to listen to, but then all the kids were home and we were busy, you know, like just doing stuff and trying to keep, I mean, I have three little kids. I'm like, get all this energy out. So like you said, we're like going on walks and they're like, let's ride the bike. And I'm like, oh, the little one's going to fall. So I have to like be more alert whenever I'm out on the walk. But yeah, I totally agree. I It fluctuates for me too. And it's funny because, um, and you can tell me if this is your listening habit as well, but whenever I find a really good podcast that's been out there for a while, I will binge listen to so many episodes, maybe one day, and then I'll go a few days and don't listen to any, and then I'll go back and binge listen to a few more episodes. Do you ever find yourself doing that? Oh, yeah, especially the ones that are like, you know, serial ones, right? I don't mean serial, like serial, the the true crime one, but any of those where it's a start and a stop, like the wind of change. I don't know if you listened to that one, but I just basically sat in my bed and <laughs> listened to the whole thing. I wouldn't get out of bed because I was just listening, listening. Yeah, my husband's I like, are you going to get those things out of your ears? <laughs> Participate in the rest of the world? <laughs> Oh my gosh. It's so funny because I have, uh, my husband had got those, the AirPods with like the noise canceling. He got those, oh, for yeah. me, which by the way, all God send whenever we're in the middle of a pandemic and everybody's home, I will say that is what saved my sanity last year. But he'll say, do you like, can you not hear me? Do you have the noise kits? I'm like, yes, you're the one that bought these for me. Yes. I always just assume I always have them on because I'm listening to a podcast. So yes, <laughs> you're in good company here. Good, good company. But, um, you know, I wanted to see, so I'm thinking that a lot of our listeners have either heard of good pods and they thought, well, that sounds like a really cool app, but I don't know that I'm ready to transition or people are listening and they're like, well, I've been listening on the same app for so long it sounds like it would be hard to transition. So can you kind of speak to that? If someone's listening, they're like, this sounds really interesting, but I'm also a creature of habit and I'm set in my ways and I don't know about switching. 
Absolutely. And I'm so glad you asked that because the other thing we get is, oh, I'm already on all these other social media platforms. Why do I want to be on another one right now? This is what I say to all those people. The beauty of Good Pods is it is zero work, right? It is It is not like Instagram where you have to think of create, getting that beautiful picture or Facebook when you have to think of crafting the perfect thing to say or putting out the, the best, I don't know, picture, whatever it is that you're putting out there. If Good Pods is your player, you are just by doing what you are normally doing, which is listening to podcasts, you are engaging with the platform. And then you get to get the benefits of it, which is being able to go through your feed and see what other people are listening to. And so it is just a matter of switching. Now, the switching, the idea of switching from whatever platform you're using to Good Pods. Um, if you're on Apple, you can download all your subscriptions on Good Pods. So it's very easy. You just click a button, they all download. And I would say that for most people, it's just most people are not that wed to their podcast player. It just happens to be what they started listening on. And so I think once you get good pods, it will be so fun for you that it will be worth the you know two minutes it took to download and sign up. And that is truly how long it takes. It's, it's like signing up for Instagram. I love this. And I can actually attest to it because that's what I did whenever, because I used to be an Apple podcast listener. And so whenever I was like, okay, there's got to be something in here. This was before you and I had ever started talking before we'd ever met. And so I'm poking around in the app and I'm like, oh, there's a button for me to just import everything. And I click the button and yeah, like you said, it was less than two minutes and everything was done. And it was so fast, so easy, and everything that I already listened to was there. Everything with Good Pods that y'all have, because I mean, y'all have made several changes. I mean, so when did the app actually launch? When when did y'all put out the first beta test or the first application? We put it out there in beta in March. Um, so gosh, almost a year ago already. That's crazy. Very quietly. Um, particularly because we had just all gone under quarantine then and it was just such a weird time. So it was quiet for a variety of reasons. And um, and then we've just watched our users. And the reason we've made so many changes is 100% based on user feedback. We watch how people are using it. Uh, we listen to people when they have new ideas. And that's where things like groups came from. It just came from our users who were asking for it. That's so incredible. Yeah, because I've been on the platform. I was on it, I think, uh, I because I first heard, like I said, I've mentioned the Buzzsprout group because you were on their podcast and that was how I found out about Good Pods. Like you were saying all these things and I was like, oh, this is the app I've been looking for. What is she talking? Where can I find this? And so that's when I joined and then I became a really avid user in the fall of 2020. And it's, it's my go-to platform because like you said, I, I love the interaction of sharing my thoughts about podcasts, but also seeing what other people are doing, what they're listening to and being able to discover other shows. So is there anything you can share about where you see Good Pods going in the future? I know y'all just released groups, but is there anything else that y'all are like, you know, this is our next big thing that we're thinking about? We have so many things. I wish you could see our product roadmap. It's like a mile long. <laughs> There's so much. Um, so, and, and and I thank everyone who's been on since the beginning. There are quite a, you know, there are a lot of people who just have lived through all of our updates because as with so many digital products, we really launched in a 1.0 version and it's gotten so much better. I love the app right now. Um, so uh, we do have a lot of things up our sleeve. None that I can talk about so much yet, but I would just say that that we're also always improving the experience, right? So little things like, oh, why does this button go to this place, right? <laughs> that seemed to make so much sense to us when we launched it. Now we use it, doesn't it? Doesn't. So we're constantly, constantly just improving the app. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I, I mean, I can definitely attest to that. Like whenever we had spoken last and then I went into the app right after we got off our phone call last time and I opened it and I was like, oh, I didn't even, I didn't even see this. 
this because like I said, I'm a creature of habit. Like I open the app, I go to my subscriptions, I see what the latest episodes are and I start playing it. So whenever you said, oh, well, did you see we added groups? And I'm like, no, because I don't go in there and poke around all the time. And so whenever mm -hmm. I saw it was like this big world just opened up. So I'm excited about all the things that y'all are doing at Good Pods, how y'all are helping not only people who are listening to podcasts, but people that are creating the content. Because I think that discoverability on podcast is one of the biggest struggles that especially new people they deal with. They're like, I just don't have a big marketing budget. And there's so many creative ways that they can use the app like we talked about earlier. So I'm excited to continue to use the platform and see where it goes in the future. But JJ, I want to switch gears real fast. Oh, did you have something to add to that? No, I just wanted to say thank you. I mean, that's 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 our real goal here is to again help listeners find new things to listen to and help pod podcasters find new listeners and we are seeing that it really does work to do both of those things. Yes. Oh my gosh. Well, I want to switch gears for a second and switch to some rapid fire questions. So, are you up for that? I think so. <laughs> we'll see how we'll see how I do. Okay, I'm prepared. <laughs> this will be good. This will be good. I, you you're a podcaster. You've been a podcaster, so you I think you are fully prepared. So the first question I have is, what advice would you give to a brand new podcaster? Being a woman in business comes with its own unique set of challenges but also so many opportunities. We get ahead by leaning in to what makes us different from business as usual. I'm Samantha Hartley, host of Profitable Joyful Consulting, inviting you to a special six episode series exploring the experience of being a woman in business. You wanna hear from women consultants who've hit a million dollars, who sell six figure engagements, or who've broken their own revenue ceilings? Yeah, those are my clients and they'll be sharing too. Join me for six must-listen episodes that tackle key challenges for women consultants. Follow Profitable Joyful Consulting on your favorite podcast app. Um, be open-minded about yourself. So really listen to feedback from people and, and really take it to heart um, because absolutely there are things you can be doing better. That's awesome. That's a good one. Okay. This next one is a two-part question. So what is a dream podcast you would love to be on? And who is a dream podcast guest you would love to interview? Oh my God. Well, right now, okay. A dream podcast I would love to be, well, I want to be on Guy Raz's podcast one day, right? I want to be on How I Built This. When is enormous. That would be fun for me, especially because I spent, I spent so many years um, covering entrepreneurship for NBC News. And so um, I just want to be on the flip side. I guess I want to be on my old podcast <laughs> where I would interview myself, right? <laughs> So I interviewed, you know, the founder of Peloton and, and it cosmetics and everyone. I want to be interviewed by me. Um, <laughs> um, oh, and a podcast guest right now. There's so many interesting people in the world right now. Who do I want to interview? Um, huh. I just keep going to um, Washington because I've spent so much of my brain watching TV. <laughs> But I don't want to interview them because I've just listened to them talk too much right now. Uh, sorry, you're really stumping me on the who do I want to interview. Mm. By the way, I used to get the question all the time, like, who was your favorite interview after 13 years of being um, in journalism? And I could never answer that one either. I'm just not a journalist anymore. So I don't do this. I don't interview people. I don't even think about it. Give me some categories. I love, it. I love it. Okay. So just imagine all of your favorite hobbies, all the things that you love to do. It could be anybody, anybody that you look for for inspiration or motivation. You know, it's funny. I spent so much of my career as a um, journalist interviewing people that at this moment in time, I am honestly just a hundred thousand percent focused on promoting other people's interviews 
right? Like it's so exciting for me to just be the person behind the scenes for a second who is out there pushing and marketing for and getting awareness for the conversations that other people like you have. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's a fantastic answer. I love that. Okay. My last question is, do you consider yourself a perfectionist? Oh, I might used to have considered myself a perfectionist, but that all would have gone and fallen apart in the past year, right? With my whole family at home, and we moved cities and trying to get everything done at once. So um, I 100% do not consider myself a perfectionist right now. I am trying to make things as good as they possibly can and have some grace for when things all fall apart. <laughs> I think I was telling you earlier, Crystal, that I just, this past week has been so nuts. Like I paid my, I paid my Amex bill to Visa. <laughs> I paid something else. So I, I got my husband's license canceled accidentally. So um, if I am a perfectionist, then I am failing tremendously. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I just, I love your honesty in that so much because there's somebody listening to this and they're like, okay, here is this amazing woman who's creating amazing things for the podcasting industry. And I think it's beautiful when people can say, I don't have all my stuff together all the time because that is okay because you are human. And I just, I know that our audience appreciates that so much. And I appreciate you coming on the show today, JJ. This was so fun. I can't wait to share more information about good pods. Uh, I'm going to link in the show notes to a YouTube video I did. That's a full demonstration of the app. And I'm going to have to update it again because now we have groups. We got to talk about groups and the ways to use them. So be on the lookout for some more good pods content, but thank you so much for coming on the show today. Oh, Crystal, I cannot thank you enough and thank you for all of your support. And I hope all of you listening, go download um, good pods and follow Crystal and follow me. And I hope you grow your audience and discover new shows on it. So were you surprised? right? Like some of the big names that are on Good Pods and just some of the things that JJ was sharing. It just makes me that much more excited about podcasting, whether you can believe that or not, that that can actually happen. It's true. It's true. I love the Good Pods app. It's what I use every single time I go listen to a brand new podcast episode. So if you've been wondering, well, what does Crystal listen to on a regular basis? I wish she would tell us. You can go follow me on Good Pods. I'm at Crystal Profit, and I would love to start a conversation or just to have you over there to suggest other shows that I should listen to because that's where I have been finding other popular podcasts. It's kind of like a domino effect. Whenever you find some of your friends or maybe other colleagues that are in your industry, you start exchanging by literally doing nothing other than listening to podcasts on the player. You're exchanging information. I found out about Rob Lowe's new podcast and actually The Smart List. So if you're fans, like I love comedy, y'all. Like comedy podcasts are my thing. I love to listen to comedians or people that have been in show business for a while. I love the behind the scenes. It's why I love the Office Ladies podcast so, so much. But I found out about these other amazing podcasts that are like they have some of my favorite comedians. And I found out about them by being on Good Pods and seeing other people listen to their shows. So like I said, go download Good Pods. Go check it out. Go follow me and see some of the podcasts that I listen to on a regular basis. You can see all the shows that I'm subscribed to. You can see like in real time what I'm listening to. And I try, it doesn't always happen, but I try to put my number one takeaway that a listener would get from listening to the episode because I can do a rating and a review. And I'm actually in the process of creating a group for the Profit Podcast listeners. So that's gonna be up very soon. Make sure you go check out the show notes, crystalprofit.com slash episode 226 to see all of the YouTube tutorials I've created, the other types of content that is around Good Pods because like JJ and I talked about, like there's just nowhere to go but up for this platform. And I think that it's such a cool way for not only us as podcast listeners, but content creators 
creators to really get our shows out there. I have a lot of really cool marketing strategies and ideas that I I shared with JJ kind of off air. And I just keep thinking there's so many really fantastic ways for podcast and content creators to use this platform that I can't wait to share with you in future episodes. But that's all I have for you today. So if this is your first time tuning in, make sure you hit the subscribe button wherever you're listening. Take a screenshot and share it on social media. Let me know what you thought about this conversation or tell me, hey, I just followed you on Good Pods or I just downloaded the app and I'm gonna go check it out. Make sure you go to the show notes, crystalprofit.com slash episode 226 to check out all the other resources that JJ and I talked about and some cool tutorial videos to get you started on the app. But that's all I have for you today. So remember, keep it up. We all have to start somewhere. Hey, Profit Podcast listeners, thanks for sticking around a little bit after the episode to hear this special message because I want to hear from you. We are starting a new segment called Fan Mail Shoutouts, and I want to hear from you and I want to hear your questions. What do you want to know? What questions have you been dying to ask me? So here's how to make this happen. Go to the app where you're listening to this podcast right now. Go there. I'll wait a second. Okay. Now, once you're there, you're going to see a hyperlink at the top of the episode description that says, send Crystal a text message. And that's all I want you to do. Send me a text. It could be casual, informal. It could be totally anonymous. Or if you want, you can include your name and the name of your podcast or content, wherever you are creating. And I will give you a special shout out in an upcoming episode. So again, go to the show notes for where you're listening to this episode right now. And it will say, send Crystal a text message. And I cannot wait to hear from you and give you a shout out in the upcoming segment of fan mail shout outs.